G'day guys, it's Mr. Jewwood here. This is uh, Dr. Lucas Johnson. We're going to be uh, showing you how to do the surface area volume ratio diffusion practicals for Year 12 Biology and Mr. Jewwood class of 2016. Maybe you're not watching it for 2016, that'd be good too. Uh, I'm holding my mobile phone because I'm controlling the GoPro with it, so hopefully that doesn't get too distracting for you or for me. Uh, so you've been given the frac sheet, or you should have. If you haven't, do download it. Uh, the camera made a funny noise, but I'm sure that's fine. Uh, we're going to work through the method as per the frac sheet that we've uh, given out. This is a completion frac, and it is this is one designed to test your understanding of how surface area to volume ratio affects the efficiency of diffusion in cells. Uh, it's a practice for a real one we're going to conduct in uh, a week or so time around osmosis, and you said you'll study the concentration on osmosis. So there we go. Uh, we've, we've talked in class about how to uh, write up the frac, or we will have if you haven't yet. Uh, so today is really just about method and how, how you go about stepping this up. Uh, hopefully you're watching this at home or before you come into the lesson, and uh, that's the idea of it. I'm going to stop this now and uh, we'll set up for the first step. Uh, hi guys, so my name is Lucas, uh, Mr. Jubilee just introduced me before. So what I'm going to do now is just go through and introduce each part of the practical uh, that you'll be doing. And then after that, we'll go through each stage uh, in a bit more detail. So the very first bit that you'll be doing in this practical is you'll be getting this, which is a type of jelly from, made from a material called agar. And mixed into that, you've got a base, so that's sodium hydroxide, and another material called phenol phthalein, which is an indicator. And so when you have the base and the phenol phthalein mixed together, it goes a pink colour. And you're going to use this to figure out how much or how quickly diffusion is occurring with different sized cubes of this. So the very first step will be to cut that into cubes, and we'll go through that in a bit more detail a little bit later. And then we'll get these, so a three by three, or three centimeter cubic cube, two centimeter cubic cube, and one centimeter cubic cube. And then we'll be putting them into beakers, and we'll be adding one, sorry, 0 0.1 molar sulfuric acid. And then the idea will be that that acid will gradually diffuse into the cubes, and it'll start to neutralize the base, and the indicator will turn clear. And so we'll get a colour change, which we can use to get an idea as to how much diffusion has occurred. And then finally, we'll get those cubes out. And as you can see there, we have uh, some diffusion has occurred. So on the outside of the cubes, the colour has disappeared. And in the centre of the cubes, we still have that indicator. So, OK, so let's go to the first step. All right, so here's the first uh, step. Now, of course, before we start any practical, um, we have to make sure that we have all our safety gear equipped. So in this case, I'm wearing a lab coat, but in your instance, you'll be wearing an apron. We also have uh, gloves as well. Even though this part looks like just jelly, it's actually got some base in there. And so to protect our hands, we of course we have to wear our safety gloves, which is what I'm putting on now. And also as an additional precaution, uh, because we're dealing with uh, liquids and acid in this particular case, we're working with safety glasses as well. So I'll just put those on. All right, so for the very first step of the frack, we have our agar block, which will be provided with a tile knife and a ruler and the idea basically is that you're going to measure up using the ruler and you want to cut say maybe a strip which is three centimeters wide and then from that be able to divide that into the cubes that you require so you should have plenty of this uh, material here to work with so even if you don't get it right the first time that's okay um, you'll be able to keep getting it right until you get the dimensions you need okay so some we prepared earlier so here we've got our cube, which is three centimetres on each side. Here we've got two centimetres on each side and one centimetre on each side. So pretty straightforward there. Once you have those cubes, the idea is to then transfer them into some beakers. So because we're wearing our safety glasses, you can put in. Now, this agar is fairly solid um, for a jelly, so you don't have to worry about it sort of smooshing in your hands. But just be careful anyway, just to make sure you don't break it, otherwise you have to waste more time preparing additional cubes. So just put them in there, try and keep them sort of separate from one another. You can see that there. All right, and the next step is that we have to add our sulfuric acid. And we have to add enough to immerse the cubes entirely. Okay, it doesn't have to be completely filled. You don't have to fill the beaker all the way up to the top, but just enough to make sure those cubes are covered. So I've got my sulfuric acid here from the Winchester. And what I'm going to do is just add that into another beaker, just so it makes the pouring into the other beakers a, bit, a little bit safer. So about 150 mils total should be enough, but if you need more, of course, just get more of that. 
And then we've got our sulfuric acid ready to go. And then next thing we need is our stopwatch. So we need to time how long those cubes are immersed in there. So we'll start. Because we have it in two, we're gonna, it's going to be a little bit rough, but we don't have to get it to a millisecond. It's not a problem. So we'll put it in there. Start the timer. Get the next one going. And just enough there. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. So now what we have to do is basically just wait for that process uh, to occur. Normally, maybe say eight, nine minutes would be enough time. What you're basically looking for is for the first cube uh, that almost loses all of its colour. That's when it's getting close to losing its colour. Not quite, there's still some colour in the middle. That's when you want to stop. So, okay. all right, so we've had the sitting in the beakers for a few minutes now. And what you can see, hopefully on the camera, is uh, the very outside of those cubes are starting to go clear. So what's basically happening is the sulfuric acid is diffusing, gradually getting into those cubes. And when it actually contacts um, the interior of those cubes, it's neutralising the base. And the indicator is changing colour to say that it's gone from basic to being acidic. So you can see it's on the outside there. And what you would notice as well um, is that you're getting roughly equal diffusion in all of those cubes. So you'd say if you had to say the rate is probably happening at the same yeah. at the same rate. We would be thinking when we do this in the end, we're probably going to be talking about efficiency of diffusion. All right. So the cubes have been sitting there for just under five minutes. So what we're going to do in this instance, just to demonstrate, is we're going to extract the cubes and then we'll have a look at how much diffusion has occurred. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get our beaker and a spoon. I'm just going to pour off the acid. And the reason I'm doing this instead of just pulling the cubes out is because they can be a little bit squishy if you're not too careful. When trying to pull them out, and you squeeze them too much, you're going to wreck your cubes and have to start all over again. So that's that there. And then once we've got it out, we can just sort of scoop them out with some paper. And then just roll them around and you basically just want to get the surfaces dry because any acid that's still on the surface is going to gradually diffuse in and you're going to get this diffusion process still occurring. And if you leave it too long in there or you don't pat it dry, this is what basically happens. So you can see with the smaller cube, when we took these ones out, it still had some colour in the centre, but the diffusion process still kept going on. And so we end up losing all that colour completely. And so now we can't actually the measurements we're looking to do with those cubes. Okay, so now we're up to the last part of the, of the plant, which is where we're going to cut these cubes open and we're going to take some measurements. So what I'll do just for the purposes of this, I'll just work with the uh, middle, middle one here. And what we're just going to do is just going to cut it in half. So just get the knife carefully, just slice it down the middle. And you can see there that we've got a nice cross section of our cube. And then the idea from here is that we're actually going to measure the size or the dimensions of that, that coloured area or that coloured section. So we're using our ruler, we'll take a measurement, so from here it's approximately 15 millimetres. And then, of course, we measure uh, each of those dimensions. And then what you'll find generally is that because the diffusion is occurring from all sides at the same time, um, you'll still get a cubic uh, volume uh, of coloured area, oh sorry, coloured uh, space in the wood cube. And then finally, once you've actually got those measurements uh, to calculate the um, volume that has actually had diffusion, uh, you get the total volume of the cube and you subtract uh, the volume of that coloured that colored cube. And then what you've got left over is the uh, volume of cube the acid's gone into. And from that you can get your idea of how efficient the diffusion occurred. Cool. Thanks, Dr. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. I'll see you soon.